Hello, hello everyone. This is Morsin from Endrime. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, we've got Gabby, Chloe, and Sabine, and Sue Barrett joining us. This is actually regarding the um, denim innovation project between Ravensbourne and Kingpins in its fifth year now. And um, let's just like let's just let us just let us just begin and let's just make let's just show the denim industry what we've been doing and how exciting how exciting it is. So I'm going to share a presentation now. So. This project's extremely like unique because it's in its fifth, fifth year and each year, and I've been involved with it from the actual beginning and it's been really fun, but um, each year it's got bigger and bigger and bigger. And for the last two years, uh, Kingpins have been, have, been, have been sponsoring it and they've been the main sponsors and some of the, some of, some of the, some of the awards have been that students have gone to New York and Amsterdam and presented their work to the industry, which is really like sort of like, sort of, sort of like unique. This, this, this year, or actually 2019, we, we did a 10 week project. It started in October and it ended just before, like Chris, before like Christmas. And it's between three different, three different courses. But the amazing, amazing thing is, not only was it sponsored by King, King Pins, it was also sponsored by many, many mills as well. So we had like 10, 10, 10 cells sponsored us. We had like Genealogia, Alter, Bossa, Cone, Candiani, Carabo, Artistic, uh, Hewitt, uh, 496 Fab Fab Lab, Neela, all, all the trims were sponsored by like YKK and we had Sue, Sue Barrett and myself like sort of like mentoring. But the amazing thing is also, we also had King, King, Kingpins helped us do their Transformers event at our like, uni at our, like university as well. So just a little, re just a little recap, we've got like, Gurmit from, who's a course leader of fashion. We've got, we've got Gabby who's joined, 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 joined us here from fashion buying. We've got like Sabine also from fashion accessories, tech, tech, textile futures. We've got like Chloe who helped us put together some of well, some the really important like Transformers Ed um, conference, which is really cool. And then the two, uh, two, like, two like, industry supports were myself, Morsin and Sue, who's joined, joined us as well. So as I said, this was a really like sort of like unique project. Most denim courses, and I'm involved with many, the denim modules aren't, aren't very long. They last for probably about two and a half weeks, three weeks, if you're lucky. You're lucky to get one industry person to come come in, and we had a number of them come come in over the ten, 10 weeks. And not only that, we were sponsored by amazing fabric mills, and so much was supported on this course. And not only that, it's three different courses that join forces over this 10, 10 weeks. I don't know, Gabby, you want to jump in and say anything about it? Or so yeah. Definitely. So I think um, the, the key point which you said is about the collaboration across the three courses. It's year two students. So we have 100 students across the three courses with um, Sabine and, Gurma and myself running that. Mm. So it's, it's a unique project also within Ravensbourne as well. And it does give um, all of the students um, an insight into how each other um, sort of like industry specialism would work actually in the industry. So the design students get to see how the buyers and merchandisers and the marketeers would work. And then the buyers get to see how the designers work and how important and how sort of like their skill and craft is so important to our industry. Yeah, no, it was, it's amazing. It's got better and better every year. And, and I got so excited, especially after the second year and third year that I had to get other people in to see it because they just weren't believing me. You know, this is an amazing course. Something's going to go going on here. And, I'm really happy that Sue could join us last year and hopefully this, this year as well, we're going to work out something too. But the amazing thing is also that the students got to go to like Spain, they got to go to like Genealogia, they got to make custom fabrics with a, a, like, a like Jacquard specialist as well, like for 496 like Fabric Lab. So, and work with some of the best fabrics, even Candiani supplied us with their ITMA awarded um, for, for, for sort of fabric, which just got its like sort of, its sort of, sort of like award. So basically we were very, very lucky really. So how the project starts started off actually just 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 at the beginning of the ten weeks or was basically Andrew gave a talk to all of the students explaining the concept behind Kingpins and his own story just to bit, give a bit of context to just to, uh, just so the students knew that they can't really they can't they can't fudge it they have to do it properly they have to do all, all their research because. Andrew gave his guidelines of what his Kingpin show is about. And if you're designing a collection, this is what it should be about. I gave a little denim history talk as, talk, talk, talk as well, which I, which I always do. Sue Barrett gave a, a couple of talks and also mentored the students throughout the 10, to ten weeks, like sort of, sort of like um, as me too. And then also we had the students went to like Genealogia, as, as, as we mentioned. So each, we actually nominated the students because we can't have all 100 students going to Spain. It would have been great. But um, we didn't do that. So we, we took a, we basically found out which students wanted to go, which groups 
were, in, were, in, were interested, in, interested in going. So we, the students actually sort of nominated themselves and then they had to give, a, give a, like a report back to all of the other students about the like requirements if they wanted to do anything with laser, laser finishing and like, and, and, like, and like sustainable like washing. We also also had like Foreseen Seinberg came and uh, Sabine, they actually, she, she actually came and she taught all of the 100 students or was it just your own group, your own like tech, tech, Textile Futures? She gave a talk to all the students, to all, the whole kind of university. And then, but then our students from uh, Fashion Accessories had individual kind of tutorials with her okay. where she went through the work, well, besides from the project and then just giving them advice and how to. Sort of like, sort of like mentorship really, right? Yes, so it was like exactly. help, help, helping them out because each of the groups, obviously we didn't mention this, Right at the beginning, most of these students they don't they're not friends with each other. They were put into groups like by like default, right? Gabby, were you involved in that? How does that work? Yes, the project starts with um, something called Project Pitch, which um, we actually ask the students to go around in set small groups, discipline groups, and then meet other um, other. Uh, courses and then they have to pitch their work and sort of find each other and then on that day they choose who they're going to be working with so they're put into their own um, their own course discipline but they have to go and find their own designers or their own buyers so right. they have a sense of agency in that in that respect and they also try and sort of align and gel on their current thinking about sustainability or design concepts or where they want to take the project because the obviously there are certain designers at certain ideas and, and certain buyers at certain ideas so it's just making sure Obviously, it's like being any type of brand or company. You always come across people that sometimes have different or different ideas, and you're trying to get one idea through. So it's a, it's a really interesting sort of project. It's, it's not many designers at that young stage get to do that kind of work. But anyway, well, it's definitely three or four designers working together as well. So they have to collaborate together on their um, concept, yeah. um, which is obviously part of Gamets and Samin's remit. But um, that when they can do that successfully, it is it is quite spectacular. Then what, what kicked off the actual project for me was our Transformers Ed um, educational conference that we did. And, 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 and sort of Chloe was um, in a major force behind actually all of this really and putting it all, to, putting it all together. But it was amazing because we got to, Andrew basically came, I think it was like nine, nine months before, he came to one of our judging events like, like kind of like before and he goes, like, wouldn't it be great is before you start the next project, I bring in all of my friends and I have the students for one day and we, we go through everything through the whole process of from cotton to like sort of like matter sort of like manufacturing. So when the students begin their project, they're a bit more, they've got all the tools or they know certain things already. So that was amazing. So uh, we got all these speakers in and they all came in, which is amazing. And Chloe, do you want to go into a little bit more about it? Obviously we've got, pic got pictures and things of, of the event too, but anything that you found from the event that was challenging or you and you enjoyed? I think it was a great opportunity as well as for students to hear from industry, but really be part of, an event and um, so throughout the whole day students were involved from the film mill because it was broadcast live throughout the day um, and it's now on YouTube am I right now yeah yeah for sure yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and for them to really see sort of you know putting on something like Kingpin Transformers and seeing how the industry all worked together to put something on so that was really interesting it was challenging at times of course but yeah, really Putting rewarding. it in any event is challenging. I think it was more of a logistical thing. I was more, I was really excited that the university were happy to open it up to other, not just for our course. Because obviously, you know, Andrew said to me, it's like, Mawson, if we did it at Ravensbourne, could more people come to it? And I went, I just have to ask. And you guys were really cool about it. And um, then it opened it. I think more than 300 students came from, I think, like 35 different colleges. It was really, it was like, as well as our 100 students, it was loads more. So it was really cool. And we're going to do, hopefully, fingers crossed, another, like, or like another one in like October.
amazing about that video is obviously like sort of like Chloe, you can actually say this, but the stu the whole thing, the whole event, not only was it, it was filmed by students, it was recorded by students, all the sound guys, it was all students that did the entire thing. That's what, that's what's great about coming to a university rather than putting it on yourself and hiring everyone from the outside. It's all students that did it. Yeah, a great mix of skill sets, not just fashion students, but, you know, film, you know, TV students all coming together to produce something really unique and amazing. So, yeah, you can see from that film that there's a, they're very talented. Very talented. I, I was so completely shocked by that. And um, I thought it was like a, a really great production. But yeah, absolutely right. So soon after the King Kingpin Tran Transformers ED event finished, we, we uploaded all of all of the videos per the, for every every speaker, which was amazing. And students still watch 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 them now, which is great. And we're um, going to carry can on I, doing. Can that. I say something about that? Yeah, please, please, please. I was just going to say because the students, so on the fashion buying side, they had to investigate the supply chains, the manufacturing and sustainability. So the fact that they got to hear from all of these key speakers in the industry yeah. who have the knowledge about the most innovative developments in sustainability was key to them actually working through the project. So Andrew was really keen that we instigate, we put the UN SDGs into the project yeah. and also that we had a complete focus on what does sustainability mean to the industry? Whereas last year, possibly it was, um, it was quite um, broad the way the students investigated it. This year, they were asked to be really critical and investigate it in a really critical manner. I think what's amazing is that all the students figured out all the sourcing issues, all the, all the, all the like sort of like, sort of like, uh, um, logistics of if we're going to make in turkey then we need to slap on everything in turkey we can't just ship yeah. it all over the place exactly, exactly. um post covid there's going to be a lot more of that i'm sure everyone's going to be more conscious about how things are made and where things exactly, are. exactly. But, um, no but this was a very special event and i'm, I'm really proud that we did it and uh, it's, it's, it's a benchmark really of how a, a fashion course should be run by having industry events right at the beginning of every, every project we're very lucky okay so then but yeah, anything else? Anything else? That anyone want, wants to add? I was, so, I was going to say that actually the people that I've spoken to who were at the event that were sort of industry uh, people, designers or what have you, yeah. found the event so incredibly uh, insightful because it really taught. I think when you go to a lot of events, people expect that you have uh, already got a, a grasp of what's happening in the industry, and it really brought it down to absolute bottom line. Yeah. This is the industry explained um, in a perfect unit. Uh, so it was so clearly put together um, and it was a beautiful execution. And you know, you could kind of take that and just repeat it exactly as it was. Yeah, uh, no, the, It just bottom lined what was going on and what you need to know. Yeah, no, it's an amazing from, education. Everything from cotton to spinning, to polyester, to tensile, to different ways of spinning. It was unbelievable. Then all the way to sustainable finishing and uh, washing. It was, yeah. it was pretty much ev everything. Obviously. But it was so clearly executed. Yeah. yeah. And I think it everyone, everyone like, had that yeah. clear 20 minutes. So it wasn't too daunting. It wasn't that heavy, I found. Obviously, like, but obviously um, yeah, it was fun for me. But then straight after Transformers, we had, I think, a nine weeks of like development and we had three different for formatives. So during those four, four, like, formatives, we had, in we, had in we had industry come in as well. So we had a few people come in, even... Um, Kame from like Logia came as well, and me and Sue came in, and a few other, every week it was slightly, like slightly, slightly different. And what's amazing about these formatives is that we got to see right at the beginning their students' con concepts, where they were literally concepts on a blackboard or a wall, all the way down to the drawing stage, to the removal stage, to the pattern cutting stage. And I think Sue, you came in quite a lot of those as well, and it must have been quite fun to see see it from the beginning. Like, I mean, I've seen it a few, a few times, but for yourself, it must have been fun. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And just seeing how, like, you know, those light bulb moments for the students where they were connecting all these different elements and kind of just giving them a, a tiny bit and then them going off into a whole different arena and pulling stuff back together. Um, but also watching their sort of like, you know, the politics of their groups unfold and and in, yeah, in a lot of that, places that really blossom. It was fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it's like, like a right? sitcom every week. <laughs> it, was a, it was a sitcom every week. I, I Denim sitcom. I, I think that's a bean. There's a lot of interesting fabric uses, a lot of different technologies these students were using, having a bonding and burning to even making garments in a, in, a, in a different way. I think a lot of it came from some of your groups, some of your students, but anything yeah, you'd like to add? Yeah, students were actually like introduced to weaving through that unit, which was quite special. And then they also, because we don't really have like 
um, like jacquard looms in our facilities, but then we actually were able to have like table looms for the students to somehow try and figure out like a couple of like weaving techniques, which was absolutely fantastic. And some and of them came up with like, really great butter, idea. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. One, one of the most bossa even like supplied yarn, I believe, right? Yes, bossa was like, yeah, super helpful and just sent us like millions of cones of yarns. Yeah, I guess you've still got enough for like use. next time. Yeah, <laughs> which is amazing. So yeah, and students are still keep on using it, which is great. Yeah, no, these formatives were really, really, really fun to be a part to be a part of, and you know, and it was fun always seeing the progress, even. I think there were some stages where, you know, I convinced one of the groups to cancel the garment and that happened to be the winning group. So I was quite <laughs> naughty for me going, I think you should just drop this garment and they were the ones that won. So some, sometimes these formatives do help, I think so. But, um, but yeah, less is more some, some, sometimes too. Anyway, so then, of course, after the 10 weeks finished, then we had our judging event, which, is, which was quite also a mega event. And we managed to document that too. And we... We got basically the cream of not. We introduced. I think it was came from. It came from Gabby or it came from Gomez. We, everyone who sponsored the course, they automatically became a judge. That's what we thought was a good idea. And in the end, everyone turned turned up. Right, Gabby. So we were like, oh my yeah. god. <laughs> so they were that excited about the project. I think only three people did, did didn't come, and that was like Carabo, Alberto Alberto Candiani, and Bossa. Other than that, everyone involved with the project, actually involved with the project, was sponsoring came. Plus, yeah. we had a few other people from the industry. We had Sam from Denim, Denim Dudes. We had Kelly Harrington. And I think that was it. And, we, um, and then we had Katie from YKK. And vintage, from Dog, yeah. from vintage, vintage Showroom. And that was so it. So they, they were all yeah. judges from the previous year as well. Yeah, so we yeah, wanted yeah. them to see the kind of the, um, the movement in the project going forward. So it's really important that we had their kind of like industry stance as well as the people who'd obviously um, sponsored the fabrics as well. No, we were extremely lucky. lucky. So obviously now let's go through each of each 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 of the groups quite or quickly. So this is Guild, is it Guild? I think I've forgotten how to pronounce them. Gilda. Gilda. And these guys, I believe, are the ones that actually won the project, right? So that's, that's amazing, yeah. amazing, amazing. And they they were their their pattern cutting skills were amazing. I actually thought, and I thought um, everything was thought of, even down to the fact that they didn't want to use cotton thread; they used like lin linen thread. It was really insane amount of detail and i think that's probably what won it all of us were like wow by the level of this project i don't know if any any of you guys want to jump want to jump in a jump in about it but i think well, for they, me I, I loved sorry i loved the fact that you know the the narrative behind so many of these groups but this group particularly their narrative and the engaging mm. uh, values that they put in place it wasn't just like the normal sustainable values but there was something so much more um, and the narrative was so engaging. They were very, they were very particular about which fabric mill they wanted to sponsor. Because obviously, we didn't give any of the students much choice. It was, I think, between Gabby and Gurma decided, okay, you're getting cone, you're getting whatever, just depending on what their project was saying to them, right? But these guys yeah. were very particular, Gabby. They were saying it had to be a British mill, right? That's what they were the saying. The students had to pitch for their sponsors, um, and then we assigned them in that way. But they were very set from the very beginning that they wanted something local to the UK because they were going to work on this local community-based um, brand idea where they would be teaching their local customers how to mend, repair, make, yeah, almost like reduce and reuse as well. So even more sort of like pertinent in the current climate. Um, but they were very keen on having yeah, something that was made in the UK mm. um, so that they could just transport it down to London, keeping the transport. I just thought um, the make was amazing. I just thought I was blown away by it, all their skills were making. But all, all the groups were amazing. They all did really clever click cutting. So let's go to the next group. This is Y. I think Y, how they pronounce it. Yeah, Do you guys I? use the Candiani sort of, sort of, sort of ITMA awarded fabric, which is amazing. And also, also nearly every group was sponsored by like YKK as well. So... YKK, I believe, even made custom trims for some of the groups, I, I, I believe. But um, yeah, that's this group here. Any, anything anyone wants to add about this group that they cannot remember from the judging event? Oh, they, I mean, they had some really interesting laser cutting techniques and some reflective techniques, which they that's added right. to the fabric because right. it was this yeah. concept of like um, being seen and then not being seen and making yourself visible at night. Um, mm -hmm. And then, yeah, and then also, the um, the Candiani fabric was was like laser cut into as well to give it sort of like a different text level of texture as well. Yeah, that, that particular fabric is only using like sort of like recycled cotton and like tensile lysol, so it's one of the most 
um, it's probably the, one of the most sustainable denim fabrics that's ever been produced up until now. So we're very lucky to get that sponsored. That's cool. The thing that I loved about that particular project, the Y project, was, mm. uh, which isn't something you see in the end result, was all of the research that they did into their consumer. Yes. And like, who was their consumer? What's the, what's the current identity for that consumer in the marketplace? And all about, you know, being part of the hood. And it was so beautiful, the research that went into it and the, the validation of why their brand would matter in that particular mindset. I know it's quite it's, it's sad isn't it that all this work and all this showing is free slides per group and we've had the benefit of seeing the entire project and seeing all the research and and um you know and some of it and obviously that's the thing about having um a physical show is that these students would have actually gone to present their work and would have sketchbooks and everything out so you know obviously there are ways um it's just testing time of how to present work now and obviously mm -hmm. sometimes you do only have free pictures to sell a concept and it's getting that mindset you know I remember doing a presentation when I was younger if you can't do it in three pictures you can't sell it there's no, no point you know it's like literally that hard it's like three pictures only i was like wow so very difficult task which you but some of the projects i've basically this one in like sort of for all that particular yeah the research behind it was was unbelievable then we have this group here i think this this group here was this was this the parachute collection i call it the parachute one but yeah um, i think it was and um i think they these guys came fourth in the end it was very upsetting but for us, but it was a real, the judging event was really hard. We all found it so difficult. Was it, did this come fourth or, or, did they, or did they make it? No, I think they would have made it. No, there wasn't a really a fourth place, but I know that their, um, were, their yeah. video, their brands, and also yeah. the fact that they had sourced a secondhand parachute and hung it from the ceiling in the yeah. trip. We've got, we've got pictures of that, of that coming. But um, yeah. again, stunning collection how it was made, um, especially with all the pleating and all the garments and the use of like the whole like sort of like, sort of like reversible stuff too. I think I've got a video of them, so let's try and see if we can play it. In the darkness, she'll disappear. Find voices. Yeah, anyway, any, any thoughts on that collection, guys, after seeing that video, what you thought about it? Nothing much? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was quite blown away by it, actually. I, was thought, I thought the video was amazing. I the garments were made really, really well. And I felt sorry for them as, as a group. But there were so many judges, and it was really tough. I thought it was a really tough one. But um, the right people did, did win. But yeah, these guys were just on the fringe, I actually thought. Right?